Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I'm going to do a quick video on my emergency library, which was very small because I didn't foresee the circumstance that would bring me again to Connecticut. And then on recent book purchase. So I have very, very few books with me. The three that you see here are the ones that I brought with me on my summer job, which turned into a move to Connecticut. Ikihomo by Friedrich Nietzsche. Ayn Rand, Philosophy, Who Needs It, and the great political theories, including Plato, Aristotle, Augustine, Cicero, Machiavelli, Aquinas, Aquinas, pardon me, Hobbes, Locke, Luther, and a few more. Those were my immediate emergency books that I brought with me in my briefcase, and that did me for about six months. In fact, I got along with the internet uh, when I needed to read, but then I had to go buy some more books. I made one trip, costing me $35, to uh, Border Book and Tape. No, no, not that one. Barnes & Noble. So I got these three at Barnes & Noble. Then, for half that much, I got eight or nine books uh, down at Strand. So the three books I got from Barnes & Noble recently. Over the Edge of the World by Lawrence Burgreen. B-E-R-G-R-E-E-N. Published in 2003, I believe, so pretty new. But it's about Magellan's um, circumnavigation of the globe. And uh, I'm not very far into it, but it's quite interesting about the machinations and so on, and who was doing what, where, and who had a reputation for what, and uh, who wronged him, and how it finally fell together. And when we think of it in history, we just think, well, they didn't know about circumnavigation or they didn't know about America or whatever and then they did you know then Columbus went on his voyage and just one day the king said Columbus you shall go on a voyage you know it didn't work out like that Magellan Columbus lots more details to it than you think <clears throat> the life and times of Jesse James by Frank Triplett now, I was uh, interested in this one first of all it was on sale for like eight or nine dollars and it's either leather or faux leather it's, it looks like a nice binding um, but it's a facsimile, which means a virtually direct copy of a book published, I believe, in like 1885 or something like that, or 1888. Uh, so there are some, that's, that's uh, some interesting material there. Reading, right, from the 1800s. Why not? How often do you get a, a facsimile from the 1800s for 10 bucks? Probably all the time. You probably go on the internet and find them all the time. So that's not how I get my books, though, is it? The Great Scientists from Euclid to Stephen Hawking for $8. Um, I actually did not need this, and I probably have a copy. But I needed it on hand in case I ever needed to tell my daughter something about some scientists. And uh, there is some advantage. I'll pause for a moment and say, I know Kindle paperless, blah, blah, blah. There is some advantage to being able to take a book and open it up and sit next to somebody and point things out or read to them bits. There's something about it. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I grew up doing that. The collected plays, the complete plays of William Shakespeare, because it was on sale, six bucks or something, four ninety-eight or five ninety-eight. And I don't have any with me, and I thought if I get bored, okay, yes, I have such a small library, I was tempted into it. Now I have, therefore, the complete works of Shakespeare already, and now I have the complete plays of Shakespeare, minus all of his other stuff. So this is less valuable of a book than the one I already have, plus I have dozens of books of just this and that play and a collection of his plays and that whatever. So now I have way too much Shakespeare and that. Okay, this one is a bit of a shame. Now we are on to, that's the end of the Barnes & Noble, now we are on, on to uh, Strand from downtown Manhattan. Their prices doubled since I lived there back in 2009-10 um, for their book prices out on the street, because I don't just go there and buy a book. This time I did. I bought the um, Basic Works of Aristotle by McKeon, um, and that was $20. And then, out on the street, they have basically discards that used to be a dollar for hardbacks and 50 cents for paperbacks. Now that's two dollars for hardbacks and a dollar for paperbacks. So, I got this, John Adams, by Paige Smith. This is volume two 
starting in 1784 and going to the end of his life, which is okay because that includes his presidency. And this was published in 1962, so if I someday I will find volume one, uh, then I'll have an excellent bit on John Adams there. Uh, Elements of Style by Strunk and White. If you don't have this and you're teaching a child from age 7 to 15, no, from age 7 to 30, then get that. Uh, general Physics for Colleges. Webster, Farrell, Drew. Um, why, Mr. Crawford? I already have several physics books. Problem is I can't study physics very closely because I don't know enough mathematics, but you know what separated Galileo from being ignorant of geometry and being a specialist on geometry was about six months of study. So uh, This was published in 1923 and a second edition in 1926. So, that's why. For two dollars. Memoirs of Hadrian by Margaret Yorkenar. Marguerite Yorkenar. It's a fairly pompous way of spelling it. Two dollars for this, and this is about uh, reflections on the composition of the Memoirs of Hadrian. Translated from the French by Grace Frick. Uh, so I think of Hadrian, Hadrian's Wall, and so on, and open this up, and sure enough, everything in here is about Rome. So it was absolutely, it was, it, you know, once in a while you open up a book that has a brilliant name, like something about Caesar or something, and you open it up and it's bunk, it's a novel or some terrible thing. All right, the United States since 1865, a history book. Why would I need that? I have so many histories already, but now I have one here on my shelf. It's not in storage over yonder. Published in 1933, so possibly slight, slightly suspicious, but probably pretty good. Latin for Americans, second book. So chapter one is a re working of the first book and chapter one is pretty good so I'm just, I don't know what I'll I'm, I'll, I'll just get finished learning ten languages and then I'll die that's what will happen it takes so long to learn them okay this one six wings uh, men of science in the renaissance and it goes over some important scientists in the renaissance such as Copernicus and company. He says he puts it from 1450 to 1600, which cuts off this particular scientist and this other one at the beginning and the end. He says there's no happy way to do it, so this is just six important scientists. And second to last, Churchill by his contemporaries. Very good. I read Churchill's uh, History of the Second World War, or one of the volumes, uh, anyway, of the, of the war years itself I think and it's excellent he's very good so now to learn more about I've read several books about him so I don't know that's that was written in that was published in 53 or 56 can't go wrong for two dollars then I was tempted to do the complete works of Aristotle on video because there's not much else to do because I used to search for videos and like I searched for Machiavelli's the Prince and all I came up with was uh, somebody had taken a nine second shot of his gravestone and that was all on all of YouTube on all of Google video There was one video about Machiavelli and it was someone who was on vacation and took a picture of his gravestone or a, sh a nine minute video So I said okay, I've got to do the prince so I went and did the prince So now you can go look at mr. Cropper's Machiavelli the prince where I go through the prince and talk about things and edit it and leave out boring stuff and read the interesting stuff now you can get 50 different videos about the prince some of it done by like PBS and stuff and some of it not so I'm being pushed to my area of Specialization or something like that which would be more difficult stuff Anybody can talk about the railroads in the 1800s or if they can't if they won't get around to that Maybe I'll do that too. I'll do the collected work of Aristotle and the railroads in the 1800s fine I don't mind um, but so I, I needed that tool and you can get a lot of Plato's books out there on the dollar racks in front of Strand, but not a lot of Aristotle's, and I think we all know why.
<laughs> Isn't that funny how 2,000 years later people can still figure out who's the real deal? So this is the basic works of Aristotle by McKeon. It's $20. So I'm ready to embark. Um, that doesn't have the Analytica a posteriori. It does have Analytica a priori. Hopefully a posteriori is an addendum to that. But if not, I can acquire that separately. And I've already done a good deal of that on video. So anyway, there it is. Emergency Library and uh, my newest book haul and uh, what I'm reading and what I'm up to.